It's all out the box. <laughs> I want to get your toxic masculinity on. <laughs> Keep on talking about that smell. <laughs> what are you talking about again? Yeah, man. It just seems like the world was a very smelly place up to a couple years ago. You know? Because yeah, you figure... Toilet, you could you could still get a splinter from wiping your ass with toilet paper a hundred years ago. I didn't know that. Yeah. So right, cause what about the cotton gin? No, nah, wasn't no paper though. Like paper was really hard to come by. I thought they just wadded up the cotton to make tissue. I think it was just like leaves or use your hands and wash it. Hell no, nah, hundred years ago? What's this, 29, 2018? Well, it was like 1895 was when they finally perfected toilet paper. Yeah, like they was wiping their ass legitimately in 1908. Yeah. Everybody wasn't, but most, Yeah. if you, yeah. That's why, yeah. The, that's why the illiteracy rate was so high because paper was still hard to come by. Right. You know, like motherfuckers couldn't read because motherfuckers couldn't write. Damn, I never thought about it. I mean, you know I've been playing a shit ton of Red Dead Redemption too. Man, I played that shit, Joe. It's outrageous. I punched my horse, mm -hmm. and then I ran over like five of the sheep that I was supposed to bring to back be to the auction. Yeah. I did the herd mission. Man, <laughs> I was like, this game is too real. Yes, it is. And I went and bought the gun with all the scopes and shit. Yeah. And... Oh, yeah, you had to get the sniper rifle to scare yeah. off the sheep. But anyway... I've been playing a shit ton of the game, and I never thought about it. Like, they in the Wild Wild West. This is 18, what, 1899 or 1895. Yeah, this shit is like 100 years ago. What was they wiping their ass with? They boots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bootstraps. Uh, <laughs> uh, the world was a nasty place. Yeah. Bunch of nasty niggas. And you got to figure the cars took shits. So it was just shit everywhere. Right. And then they wasn't washing their hands because there wasn't like running water everywhere. Nah, it was lakes. So it's like, <laughs> rivers. what do you wipe? Why do you wipe your ass with? What are you washing your hands with? But that's why human civilization has always been close to water. Right. And like, that's how so ancient many... Egypt is the Nile River. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Rome, you got the Caspian Sea or whatever. That's how know. the Black Plague started, though. Yeah, because yeah, they ain't had no way to dispose of their shit. They're just throwing their shit out in the street. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> that shit's nasty. Yeah. Literally. Oh, man. So, welcome back, everybody. This is episode 27 of the Faculty Lounge man, Podcast. 27. Yeah, we made it thus far. Thus far. Oh, yeah, John Jay over here. Matt Black. Yeah. No AKAs today? Huh. Bodie. Okay. Father of the year. We finna go see the Wildcrats today. Yeah, he's going to see Wildcrats. We got Tater Chip in the building, so y'all might hear him rummaging. He might even make a cameo. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you're watching this video right now, make sure you like, subscribe, share with your peoples, uh, leave a comment, because we love those, man. Yeah, man. It makes me feel like somebody's listening. Exactly. We know you're listening. Even what is your take on... The shitty situation that was the human race on planet Earth 150 years ago. What do you think they was wiping their asses with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, all right, I want to ask you a question before we get to the shits, man. Mm -hmm. You ever wake up and feel washed? Sometimes, like, the pillow be really salivy. Yeah. And then just be like, ugh. <laughs> like you just wake up feeling like extra <laughs> filthy and it's like you look in the mirror and see your stomach and you're like, man, oh, man. fuck, man. <laughs> and the hair don't make it no better. Yeah, you look at your <laughs> shit and it's like, man, I just ain't got the line and I used to have. <laughs> I got three fifths of a fro. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like when you when you think about going out. And you be like, man, it's cold outside. <laughs> man. Like, do you remember the time where nothing would stop you from going outside and getting it cracking? Man. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like I need to leave Chicago to feel like that again. Right. Like, like, yeah, like in Chicago, that shit is over with. Because like when I went to Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. I would literally wake up in the morning, go sit on the porch with a cup of coffee and smoke a squat. Mm -hmm. Before I did anything, mm -hmm. like I was outside in nature, in, in the shits. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like fucking parakeets and all sorts of birds you don't see in Chicago flying around. Yeah. A mountain over there. Like you want it to be outside of the crib. I, yeah, I, I was I was thinking like, man, shit, because I was supposed to go out yesterday, and like, and, and when shit fell through, it was yeah. really when the shit <laughs> fell through. I was looking at my Jordans. You did a little happy <laughs> dance in your head, man. The the, the 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 goddamn sad music came on, and I looked at myself like, it might be over. <laughs> <laughs> I might I might be washed. <laughs> Yeah, man, I remember doing cartwheels out the door. Yeah, yes. like nigga. going outside. Yeah, like I think after Vegas, the washing began. <laughs> Damn, but I mean, I think it's gonna come back. Middle life crisis status. Nah, man, I don't uh, want to have a midlife crisis. Or hit man. that thirty-five year peak. Yeah, as soon as you turn thirty-five, it's like woo I think that's why I just started working out hard as fuck to run away from being washed. There's one thing I noticed, man. 35-year-old men, uh-huh. they got that twinkle in their eye like a 21-year-old man. Oh, yeah. And like, yes! <laughs> I finally made it! <laughs> no, I was thinking, out, thinking about with this whole being washed thing, right? Like, you and I both share a, a passion for older women, so to speak. Mm-hmm. When does the older woman just become the woman? Man. I called a 70-year-old lady a girl the other day, and she smiled at me. Oh, like, Ooh. Right, it's a compliment, but once yeah. you get to, what is that age where it's not cute no more for you to have a crush on the older woman? I said 24. I said, well, I said at 24, you have access to every woman. Right, all ages. Yeah, because as soon as you hit 24, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, he, that's a young one right there, but they could still reach down and grab you. Right, mm-hmm. like it's, but is is that something like to be thirty five to have a fifty year old woman? Is that That's, something to brag about still? No, it's just a at that age. It's, it's just, just a, woman. a woman. Yeah, I think it's kind of bad to have a fifty year old at thirty five. Yeah, like see, at thirty five, it should be going down instead of up, right? Huh? It depends on what you like. I I think you know because you can still because at thirty five you are you still the cool uncle. Right. Now you the uncle that wear right. the leather jackets and right. the motorcycle. So you in the auntie club. Uh-huh. Aunties is available. Mm-hmm. You know, and willing. Right. You got you, you got some it's evident that you got some money. Yeah. You know, you do stuff. Yeah, you know how to do stuff. Yeah. You go yeah. nice places. Yeah. You, you know been nice places. I feel like once you hit thirty five is really when you're supposed to start like going on cruises and shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't did like the dinner cruises in Lake Michigan. No, 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 know? nigga. I'm talking, you're about talking about the Bahama Cruise. Pay. The, right, <laughs> Central Pay Central Pay. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn, uh, uh, Mescal, Mexico, or whatever. Yeah, 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 those cruises. Hey, you know, I never been to Mexico, man. I never did the the spring break in Acapulco and all that shit. No, I feel like I missed out on all of that young student shit because I was such a scumbag. Mm. Like I purposely took myself out of enjoying those years to the fullest. Man, I did some dumb shit during those years. Yeah. But you was right there. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like, everything one except for that what I happened did. at college. College? I, was, I have no idea what happened. College and selling books. Yeah. Because selling books was a whole different thing. I think I was a clone during college times. I just became one of the pack. Oh, man. Like, I just did what everybody else did. Man, I did nothing that everybody else did in college. I did nothing. I literally sat there. And smoked my brains out. But you had a pimp cup. <laughs> <laughs> you had a pimp cup. I had a pimp cup, a Carhartt, and a curl. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I remember that Carhartt and the curl. Oh, yeah. Man. That was just bad, man. Yeah, man. man. I, I remember a motherfucker had a, a Louis Vuitton wrap Durango. Ugh. With spinners. Ugh. I, did I tell you? I seen some spinners in 2017. And and they was clean as fuck. The you know car what? was sitting still, was parked, and the rims was spinning. You know what's cold? What's that? On the Rolls Royce. What's that? When the motherfucking, when you on the highway, looking at that Rolls Royce, the double R in the tire. Oh, it stays weighted. still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that so double R don't move. Like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tight, yeah. you doing, that motherfucker doing 90. Yeah, just, it's just. 
Yeah, that's cold. Yeah, man. That's the anti spinner. <clears throat> okay, so that's a, I I wanted to ask you about the being washed thing because I really had to sit and think like, when do you accept it? When do you accept that it's over now? And it's like you need to focus on what you gonna eat for dinner. Yeah, so every I was, night. I was thinking about Larry. <laughs> <laughs> And how he was the youngest person I ever knew uh -huh. to retire from rapping. Yeah. Like he just said he wasn't a rapper no more, like at 17. Uh -huh. But before that, he had had some kind of success yeah. as a rapper. Yeah. Like he was doing shows in other states and they was, ammunition was popping, you right. know? Ammunition was popping. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but um, he just decided to not be a rapper anymore. Uh -huh. Like before, he was old enough to buy. Cigarettes. Right, I remember when Larry retired. Yeah, it yeah. was like, how do you retire from rap in your team? Mm. Like, as a somewhat successful rapper, right? And Do Dirty is still putting work in right now. Yeah, yeah, that's something. Shouts out to Do Dirty. Yeah, shouts out to Dirty Music Big on Instagram low. at Dirty Music. Shouts out to all the lows, man. Yeah, man. that was an integral part of my college education. I was never a low. I hated y'all niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted I wanted two minutes individually with each one of y'all, man. <laughs> I probably would have got my ass with, but still, the animosity in me would have made me keep the fight up. Oh, it was like twelve y'all and one of me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of lows. Oh, shout out to Loud Pack Lowski too. Yeah, one okay. of the original lows. Mm -hmm. He's getting it cracking on a whole new level in Atlanta, man. Oh, he in Atlanta. Yeah, I love oh. to see the guys putting in work, man. Keep it up, baby. Salute. Yeah, man. Shouts out Sean Breeze, too, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I he's need, out here doing yeah. good things for the neighborhood. At, for I the, need for DJ the Breeze on Instagram. Um, at Young Ballers TV. Shout out to Sean Breeze. He is definitely making a difference for the youth out here, man. Mm -hmm. An overall positive person, man. He be working out and shooting basketballs and stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, Lacing man. his shoes up. Hey, man. One shoe at a time. Hey, man. Two plus two is four. Every time. Every goddamn time. All right, let's get into some topics, man. Um, I had a busy week. Yeah, man. What do you want? Are we starting sad or are we starting happy? I, mean, I, it really I feel like it's better happy. when we start happy and end sad. Isn't that life? Isn't that what being washed is all about? <laughs> is this the washed? Is this the washed episode? I hope not. Oh man, we this, got a lot more shows to do. This man. the washed pod. This the this would be the last podcast because we are now washed. <laughs> what the ain't washed, nigga? I just came back from New Orleans. We only twenty seven. Yeah, we are only twenty seven. <laughs> twenty seven. I don't want to be twenty seven. Anymore, <laughs> I like the age I am. Well, you gotta wait till next week. We'll be twenty eight. True. I keep on missing the pun. Yeah, you're right. I am only twenty seven. <laughs> Hell yeah. So let's start with. You know, what I want to start with. I want to start with Floyd Money Mayweather. <laughs> yeah. So I just read another article. Okay. And then I scrolled down, and it's like Floyd ain't gonna fight the little Japanese boy. No. And I was like, that makes sense. Why would he? Now, let me ask you a question. I know you don't follow boxing. I am like a huge boxing fan. I'm not going to call myself an aficionado. You know, I'm not a fan of touching other people. Like contact stuff? Yeah, like wrestling, UFC, boxing. You're a wrestling I mean, fan now, though, right? I mean, I know people's names now. Like, mm -hmm. as much as I knew people's names when it was like Triple X and The Rocks. No, <laughs> The Rocks. The Rocks. <laughs> Triple H. Triple X rock. and the rocks. <laughs> God damn, what's wrong with you, boy? I just woke up, man. No. <laughs> Can't use that as no excuse, B. You're going to see Wildcrats. <laughs> Tighten up. I am washed, man. Hey, yes, I, you are. I am so excited about going to see Wildcrats. You, man. you extra washed. <laughs> Being a good father is extra washed. Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> I was thinking about that, man. Like, people, like, unless you're a celebrity dad, being a good dad is washed. Like, to this day, people still call me Elaine. And I'm like, I'm a father. <laughs> 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 like, I'm proud to be Elaine. You got Shit. damn right. Yeah, you got to be lame for your kids. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man, you can't. Like, that's the mama. The mama fight being washed. Yeah. Daddy don't yeah. give a damn. Like, man, my job is to feed your little punk ass. 
The mama yeah. want to hang out and kick it. Yeah, drink all the Hennessy and shit. And make it appear that she's not washed. <laughs> hey, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Hey, man. The only person that matter love me. <laughs> That's all that matter. So, this nigga Floyd. Why is Floyd still trying to fight? I don't understand. You made it to 50 and 0. Yeah. Like, why don't you just stop at 50 and 0? Like, he has enough money to, like, produce Tyler Perry movie. Now, that's what the debate is. The debate is that he doesn't have that much money. Mm. But I don't know how that would be, though. This man, in the past, like, we watched him make 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, 600 million. Like, back to back to back to back. Yeah. How do you blow I mean, that much money? Because how much was the all-diamond watch? I don't know. You don't remember the all-diamond watch he had? No. It was like $100 million or something like that? Nah. Uh, 50 was clowning them for it? You don't yeah. remember the all-diamond watch? Hell no. Uh, well, yeah. So, when you buy things like all-diamond watches, and then, you know, he a, like a huge gambler, like a sports book. I mean, that's what you, that's how you lose hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. quick. Right, because I was thinking about, he talk about how much he wins. But we never see them big losses. And I know yeah. it's some doozies. Yeah. And if you losing that much, the mind state of a gambler, if I lose, next time I need to bet twice as much. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Ah. I, mean, I can't say it's crazy because it's a real addiction. How yeah. do we feel if, if one day it comes out that Floyd Mayweather's broke? That Floyd Mayweather... Wow. Mayweather... Floyd. Floyd Mayweather is the next Mike Tyson. He may weather or weather not be broke. <laughs> uh, yeah, nah, but Tyson ended up all right, though. Mike Tyson is worth $3 million. I think Tyson, but Tyson had the best luck of anybody. Do you know why? Why? Tyson is the luckiest athlete on the planet. The luckiest was... black man on the planet. Him and OJ. Why is OJ lucky? Ain't but, OJ locked up right now? No, OJ is out of jail banging 19 year old white girls. Again? Again. Oh, man. I say Mike Tyson because you know why? When you introduce Mike Tyson, you can introduce him as world champion, actor, and rapist. <laughs> I, <clears throat> I'm not calling Mike Tyson a rapist. But I am saying that this is what people call him. And he's still on top. I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in this day and age of Me Too and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson is a convicted rapist. but He got in and out before the Me Too. Right. No pun intended. It's not funny. You, you have horrible, that's a horrible point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not mean to say it like that. But. Yeah, but all respect to Mike Tyson. I'm not trying to fight him. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's what that's what people still refer to him as a rapist and he's still yeah. on top. But Floyd Mayweather had kind of the opposite fortune. Like he wasn't convicted ass. of rape. I mean, he's just a a, a stunner. True. He mm -hmm. is the number one stunner. Yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah. Crocodile everything, you crocodile think, diamonds. You think he voted If Floyd Mayweather ran in the general election against Donald Trump, would you vote for Donald Trump? <laughs> yeah, man. What's up with this question, man? That's a, it's a funny question, like, man. What is the whole, who would you vote for Donald Trump instead of? Right. Where did this come from? That's a funny-ass question. You think about it. Think about it, right? Now, think about how wacky it is that Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. Think about the wacky candidates to come, because this is only the beginning. I mean, what, the Syracuse Minuteman? Look, <laughs> the Democrats don't have anybody to beat Donald Trump. Beyonce. Exactly. <laughs> so, you are gonna you would vote Beyonce over Donald Trump? I don't know. <laughs> and I don't, I, you see how uh, wacky it is? Yeah. This shit is fucking wacky. Yeah. I would definitely vote for Oprah over Donald Trump. I mean, I know she did some dark stuff in the in the mm -hmm. in the dark, yeah. you know. But I don't know. I feel like Oprah's successes are 
bigger than Donald Trump's success. So you would vote for Oprah Winfrey over Donald Trump. Yeah. But what about Jesse Jackson? Nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> what about... Even though he's been in politics a lot longer than Oprah. What about Al Sharpton? Nah. They, so, wait, they wait, wait, wait. Together, you telling though, me you going to vote for them? go together, though. What, Donald... I mean, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton? Yeah. Eh, not really. Hmm. Eh. I mean, hmm. who's more Louis Farrakhan? Al Sharpton, you would say he's more Louis Farrakhan. Uh, I don't Jesse think either Jackson. one of them fall into that category. Not mm -hmm. in the the honorable ministers category. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, that's funny. That's funny. In the midst of all of the Black Lives Mattering and all the we hate, uh, we don't hate a, nobody. An agent. I mean, well, the Agent Orange bashing. Oh, yeah. In the midst of seeing uh, Jesse Jackson or a Al Sharpton. You would not vote for the black man. <laughs> you would vote for Agent Orange. Or oh, would you just oh, yeah, sit this yeah. one out? I, yeah, see, I've only voted twice. Uh -huh. you know, that's why I was so adamant about voting this time. Like, Y'all got to get out there and vote. Because right. the reason why I started voting mm -hmm. is because Donald Trump is our president. <laughs> like, I didn't vote for Rahm Emanuel. Mm -hmm. I didn't vote for Barack Obama. I didn't vote for... Uh, yeah... Danny K. Davis. <laughs> I didn't vote for didn't vote for Willie Wilson. Willie Wilson. I voted for Willie Wilson. No, uh, I just yeah, man, I I ain't never voted before until it got scary. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's like human nature, right? Like you don't start caring about it until it's until scary. It, shit it's at your door. Yeah. See, and that that takes me to an interesting point. I'm glad that we made it here because it's a whole lot of fuckery going on behind this going vote shit. Cause all right, I believe that an uh, uh, uninformed vote is worse than not voting. Yeah, you just voting. Just because somebody said go vote. Yeah. Like, is saying go vote irresponsible in some regard? So are you saying that Floyd Mayweather voting would be irresponsible because I... he doesn't know how to read the names on the paper? <sighs> See, now you take me to a I was trying to... Look, we got serious issues over here, man. We got serious issues, okay? Uh, Floyd Money Mayweather is a national treasure. What nation? <laughs> the money team. <laughs> no, nah, but seriously, though. Because when I went in there... I must admit, outside of the, it, was a, it's a lot of people on the ballot. The ballot yeah. was four pages of people to vote for. Four pages? It was Damn. front to back and then front oh, to yeah. back. You know what I'm saying? So, outside of the... I voted for weed. Yeah, I definitely voted for marijuana. Oh, congratulations to Shaka Luther Garvey. Yeah. Michigan is the, uh, is the next state to legalize recreational marijuana. Yeah. So, congratulations, Shaka. Smoke up. And smoke weed, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm. I was looking like outside of the the you know the people that I personally researched. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about any of these people. Like all of the judges, I, didn't I had know no clue. judges. <clears throat> like the only judge I recognized is somebody a name that I thought I recognized as a judge presiding over one of my cases. Mm. Like yeah. that was it. So I heard a story about a and girl that, that might not like, be that person because I don't know who these judges are. Man, I heard about a story <clears throat> about a girl that was like, "Vote that judge out because she took my baby away." And then I heard the backstory, and it was like, "No, the judge gave the baby to the rightful parent." <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, wow! I mean, that baby was supposed to go to that parent because wow. that parent was able to take care of him better. Wow! And on that note, shouts out to Gangsta Bonds. He got custody of both of his sons. Full, physical, and everything. All custody. right. Yeah. Gangster Barnes. What's yeah. up with you, man? He is a gangster, man. He was always a gangster. <laughs> on the motherfucking Lakers, on 2K. Yeah. True. <laughs> he put the ball in Kobe face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gangster Barnes. <laughs> yeah, man. Matt Barnes is yeah. what I'm talking about, y'all. Yeah. The most weed smoking this ex NBA player that I can think of. So I think that we got to be more responsible when it comes to being informed about voting because it's like, man. But now, 
what I saw on Twitter was there's a lot of like websites and like apps that you can go to and ask about like who's on the ballot and like what have they done. Stat. I know that. Yeah. I know me. So I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a big 2A advocate, right? I don't even know what that is. Second Amendment. Uh -huh. So I was looking for the stances of the people that were running on the Second Amendment and gun rights. <clears throat> and a whole laundry list of sites with statistics came up. But it's like, I clicked on one and it was the NRA website. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, this is going to be pretty biased. So it's basically telling me if I'm running on a single issue, I'm voting Republican all the way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's messed up, man. Because yeah. it's like, I don't want to, I don't know. It's like, I, it's not that I don't want a Republican majority, but it's like, I don't want to vote all one way based on this one issue. Like Maybe a Republican majority wouldn't be bad mm -hmm. under different leadership. Mm -hmm. But with the president we have now. I think that's like, what it is. Okay. Because <clears throat> don't get me wrong. Stop. I don't have no loyalties to the Democratic Party. Like, mm. fuck the name. What have they done for me? I'm only loyal to House Party. Yeah. I'm loyal to... Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy on the love. God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, but yeah, I seen some fuckery. Um, they actually touched somebody's ballot and looked at it in yeah. the polling place. Like, these people that, that are volunteering to work at the uh, polling places don't know what they're doing, not being properly trained. They know what they're doing. They're making $17 an hour. <clears throat> exactly. For one day work. And we talk about voter fraud and sabotage. That is a form of sabotage. Having misinformed people in your polling place. Yeah. Like, that's self-sabotage. But, I mean, there's people from the community. Yeah. So, I didn't know that construction workers were supposed to be people from the community. Like, when they come on your block and tear up your block and it's then supposed they to be repave people. it. It's yeah. supposed to be people that live in that community that they're paying to do that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. But I it's wish. the same family. Nepotism like a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Absolutely nepotism. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so next time, man, we get out and vote. But we're going to put, let's put some information out to figure out how to find out who to vote for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah, next time, the next time it comes time to vote, we're going to do that. We're right. going to do a let's better job play our part. giving y'all websites to go to exactly. and learn about the candidates. Exactly. and uh, Because voting is one thing, but being knowing, informed yeah. is the most important part. Yeah. So... Where else? Where, where, where you want to go next? We just knocked out Floyd and voting in the same goddamn thing. Where we going next, man? Man, we going to what they love, man. What do they love? The symphony orchestra. Yeah! <laughs> that, I think that might have been the greatest shit I've seen all week, man. Yeah! <laughs> <Fuck> Damn! <laughs> symphony orchestra song appreciation. <laughs> hey. We talking about Chief Keith. <laughs> Bitches love Sosa. With a live symphony orchestra. Hey, shout out to Chief Keith, man. The man is, he's healthy. You know what I'm saying? He looks way bigger than he used to. Yeah, he, he's grown he's up. He's grown up. He is no longer Chief Keith. He is Mr. Cozart. <laughs> In a good way. In a good way. Shout Not out. defending Cozart, Mr. Cozart. Like, he walks in the room, you want to call him Mr. Cozart. Mr. Cozart. Yeah. yeah. He sounds grown. He looks grown. Sounded like he ain't performed in a while, though. Like, it's, it's crazy because when he first came out, mm -hmm. motherfuckers was like, oh, he ain't going to make it to 21. Because mm -hmm. he was like 17. Yeah. He's like, what, 23 now? 24? At the most, 24? I think 23. Like, he's, he's really a young legend. Like, mm -hmm. he changed the rap game. Like, That's messed up. He can't come back to Chicago. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, like, won't they? Any don't he got like outstanding warrants? Like he gotta go to jail if he come back to Chicago, right? I don't think so. I think, or he, if he get caught in Chicago, I think it's more of a gang thing. Like they want to kill him. Uh, uh no, no, no. He got yeah. legal problems in uh, Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, isn't there extradition though? Like, can't you get? I, I've seen motherfuckers get popped in different states and have to get taken back to where they come from. I don't know. That's just, that's some. I know he got. I know it was some reason it had to do with the law. Why he had to leave Chicago? Because they wouldn't. He can't perform here. Yeah, he just can't get no money here. So why would you go somewhere you can't get no money to spend money? Shit, I know niggas living here all their life can't get no money. 
<laughs> but, I mean, that nigga but, right there. Can't <laughs> <keep nobody. laughs> There's nobody right there, y'all. <laughs> He's just that nigga there. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, no, <laughs> is is hip hop in a place of a new renaissance? You gotta you gotta rephrase that. I don't I don't, I don't, I don't explain. So I'm confused. So we seeing artists like Chief Keef perform hit songs with symphony orchestras. Mm-hmm. We are seeing videos like Feels Like Summer. Mm-hmm. We have artists like Join the Lucas. You know, mm-hmm. like real art being made. We got Pharrell and Tyler the Creator scoring the Grinch. Exactly. We have we have artists being taken serious as legitimate designers now. Yeah. Like, is this is this the golden age? Are you talking about Reebok Yellow? We can talk about Reebok Yellow. I'm is confused, this- but I I yeah, let's do it. I don't understand. I don't. I didn't know anything about Cardi being Reebok. Yeah, so they have out. a they have a collaboration coming. But you yeah. know what I heard about on the news? What's that? Post Malone and Crocs, <laughs> and they sold out within like thirty minutes. Post Malone has been taking down several notches in my book <laughs> in the past year, like the bullshit he said about hip hop, and now this Croc shit. What did like, he say about hip hop? <clears throat> so he's like, man. Yeah, don't don't go to don't listen to hip hop if you want to cry. Don't listen to hip hop if you want to, you know. He is basically discounting the emotional content of hip hop music. Man, who is that white boy's the dude? Like, who are you to say such things about hip hop culture? I mean, hip hop music. He's trying to put himself in that Nelly category, you know, because Nelly goes out with. He'll never be a Nelly. Nelly don't go out with. Um, the Def Jam greats. He go out with Florida Georgia <laughs> line. Florida Georgia <laughs> and the, and the uh, Zach Brown band. Yeah, like he and go the Dave out with Dave Matthews. The, no, not Dave Matthews. Like the real country motherfuckers. Yeah. Like Nelly come out with the country people. Well, he did. Perform he, at Wrigley Field and like do big big things. Well, I mean, his first single was Country Grammar. Yeah, oh, it like, makes he's sense, a, I guess. A country rap artist, yeah. country rap tunes. Yeah. Well, I. I I don't like the Post Malone Crocs. <laughs> I lost a lot of respect for Post Malone when he said what he said about hip hop because it's like there are songs that have played that we've cried to by rappers. Like not me and you together, but there are yeah, songs man. that you've heard and songs I've heard yeah. that provoke that emotion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> I mm. mean, that's uh, that's that's that was disrespectful. And Crocs are disrespectful. <laughs> hey, well, you can't get Gators. You gotta get Crocs. Yeah, I don't. I can't. I can't go. So now, are Cardi B's Reeboks gonna look like the Balenciagas, the ones that look like socks? I don't know, man. I I doubt it. I doubt it because Cardi B is a real person. So I <laughs> imagine it will look good. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. People like to make fun of Cardi B, but she's a solid person. Mm-hmm. Like she is solid. She is a real human being. Yeah. I mean, she's a Dominican woman. How could she be anything else? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, you got you got my face like Rihanna. Like Rihanna's shoes was crazy. They got the bows instead of shoe strings. But I think Rihanna is a planet. Yeah. Like she's... Cardi is still a person. Rihanna is a continent. Now you think Jay? How much do you think Jay Z had to do with that? What, with Rihanna yeah. becoming the planet? Yeah, just being under the umbrella. Little Miss Sunshine under the umbrella. I mean, I think it's, it was it was savvy to place her the way that she was placed. Like, from the beginning, she was placed not as an R&B act, but as a pop act. Yeah. So, whereas Beyonce was placed as R&B and had to transition over, yeah. Rihanna was that from the start. Yeah, but Beyonce was also family. Like, that was mm-hmm. her daddy. Mm-hmm. That put these other girls around her because Beyonce was always gonna be the queen. Like mm-hmm. She was born the princess, and they put these other girls around her, made her big up, and then they broke the girls off. It was like a cocoon. Like Destiny Child was a cocoon for her, and then she blossomed into this butterfly, and she's just Queen B. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas Rihanna just came like she was just a little girl <laughs> over there. Jay Z was like little girl. <laughs> Little girl, I'm gonna make you rich. Come now, <laughs> hell no. 
But yeah, I, I think Jay Z definitely has something to do with that. And that's mm-hmm. another part of the fucking renaissance I'm talking about. Like, we're talking about Jay Z. When the last time we talked about Jay Z as a rapper? Like, strictly as rapper hove. Yeah, I think a couple episodes ago we was talking about him. <clears throat> like, we talked about the Carters and we talked about 444. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but those are like rare occurrences now. Yeah, he's more of what has he done yeah. for this industry or for these people or in the art world. Or, right, right. You know, yeah. Like, he introduced a whole new generation to, like, Basquiat. That's, that's crazy that he's not on um, Poison. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of people that ain't on Poison. Uh, like, DMX ain't on Poison. Yeah. Cassidy he, ain't on Poison. Has DMX retired or no? No, no. He, DMX in jail. Oh, but yeah. then that's nah, why. He ain't retired, but no, nah, man. It's songs. <laughs> but, yeah, I would have liked, I would have liked to hear, heard a, uh, 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 Fucking Cassidy joint on the Swiss album. I'm not sure if those are them, uh, no. but that's this. And I clicked the link that said, check out Cardi B's look with Reebok. Ass trick. No, these are the ass tricks. Those are. That no. might be her ass trick, though. The colorways? Yeah. Maybe. I'm not sure, but that's the link I clicked. So. Uh, I still fuck with the Reeboks. <clears throat> I fuck with the Reeboks over the Felines. I don't fuck with Reeboks because of the quality. Man, I, like, I bought several Reeboks. And they were terrible quality shoes. I've had some Reeboks in my day. Yeah, I, I don't want shoes, man. I don't want to talk about Reeboks. <laughs> man, Pharrell just dropped all these new colorways for the um human made the hue. All oh, the the Adidas. His, his Adidas. Yeah, yeah. them bitches cold. The black ones and the white ones cold. Yeah, yeah. I need oh. some new shoes. I need some threes. I need Jordan Brand to come out with some decent looking black threes. <clears throat> you ain't gonna get no black threes, man. Yeah, man. Uh-uh. Black Jordans are expensive. But, um, yeah. So let's talk about the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Yeah. it's uh, I guess it's becoming a highly coveted position in hip-hop now. Because before Jay-Z got in, I don't remember ever discussing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. what I didn't know is that J.D. was inducted this year in 2018. And it, it well fucking deserved. Yeah, he 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 was on the radio. Yeah, like JD is highly underrated. Like not only as a art, like they see him as an artist, but they don't give him the respect like they give him to Puffy. Yeah, and you know I've I've always seen JD as more of an artist than Puffy. Like JD has had his hand in every iteration of hip hop, starting from the early nineties. Yeah. So all the way from then till now, he had his hand in everything. And he's married to Jenny Jackson. Yeah. He's married to Jenny Jackson, told her to go marry a billionaire mm-hmm. for 10 years in one day and come back. And now they're dating again. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to JD, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. All right. So we have a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a eclectic list of people that are nominated, but we just going to mention the ones that are nominated from, the hip hop community, which mm. are Missy Elliott of Missy Elliott fame, mm. uh, Dallas Austin, um, he's responsible for a lot of the TLC's his hit records. Um, Mariah Carey is nominated. Now, is Mariah Carey hip hop, pop, or R and B? Mariah Carey is pop. She's pop. Yeah, but you know she transitioned over to hip hop. Mm. So like, I guess when she's with Tommy Matola, she was pop. And then she, cause you know, she like, it, it was like all of a sudden. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's not like, Mariah Carey no more. It's Mimi. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, if you ask Nori, Mariah Carey always been a hood motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Eminem might have bad things to say. You know what I mean? She married Nick Cannon. Yeah. 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 I oh. guess. Now what makes Nick Cannon? <laughs> What you about to say about Nick, cuz? What makes Nick Cannon a rapper besides the fact that he put out a rap album? I mean, that makes Kobe Bryant a rapper. That makes Alan Iverson a rapper. Well, I mean, he also did a stand-up special. <laughs> Does that make him a comedian? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, he's consistently tried to put out rap projects, though, Nick Cannon. Like, he put out the, the Ike Turner project. <laughs> 
Why you got me defending Nick Cannon over here, man? I don't want to defend Nick Cannon. Because it's fucking Nick Cannon, man. I mean, I guess Wild and Out makes him somewhat of a hip-hop staple. Don't do that to me, say. <laughs> He's not a... Well, I, I guess he is a hip-hop staple. The Wild and Out, Wild right? and Out, Drumline... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, now, Drumline wasn't really hip hop though. Drumline was more of a college band hey, movie. Chirac. <laughs> <laughs> he is Chirac. Yes, he does exist. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh man. So I'm I'm glad to see that Missy and 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 Dallas are nominated because these are two staples in yeah. hip hop. Like, can you imagine no TLC and no Missy? Yeah, that's crazy. That's outrageous. I mean, Virginia Beach would have still been on the map. Like, Virginia Beach is low-key the place to be. You got the the Clips. Yeah. So it goes what? The, the clips, clips, Chris Brown. Well, he's from Tallahassee. Yeah. He ain't from Virginia Beach? Mm-mm. Ah, I thought he was from Virginia he Beach. He said Tallahassee on Kiss Kiss with T-Pain. Ah. Yeah, he's not from Virginia Beach. Speaking of T Pain and speaking of people that are staples, did you hear what uh did you see the the, the tweet that T Pain put out about legacies? Nah. So about being born in auto tune? Nah. Nah. He was talking about Aaliyah. Mm. So I'm pulling up the exact tweet right now. Now where is Aaliyah from and how did she marry R. Kelly and how did she find her way to Virginia Beach? Let's not get there yet. Not quite yet. So T Pain said Aaliyah's legacy is overhyped because of her early death. I can see that. Yeah, I, I can see it too. I can see it too. But when you use words like overhype, it make it seem like he's trying to drag her. But it's like she only put out what? Aaliyah put out three albums. Like Biggie. One was posthumous. Like Biggie. Right, and Biggie only put out two albums. And one was posthumous. Right, the third one came out way after he died. Yeah. Yeah. With all sorts of people who wasn't even rapping yet when he, when yeah. he passed away. Yeah, I think that's a problem where you can't be opinionated about stuff like that. Because it's like, now everybody that dies becomes canonized. Like, even if you look at... Um, Triple X? Yeah, Triple X. Mm. Like, come on, man. When they He was popular. He had his cult following. But yep. mainstream wasn't checking for Triple X. Mm -mm. They had actually banned his music off of Spotify. Oh, wow. Yeah, off of all the playlists. But once he died, it's he a whole it Triple X playlist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's just that's just clout chasing, if you ask me. Yeah, man. Like, I... the, the, mo the most of the people beefing about this, too, ain't even old enough to remember anything before more than a woman. Yeah, man. I remember Leah back in the day. What's that? Dun, 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 dun. That song with Timbaland and Magoo. We gonna show you. Oh, how yeah, to yeah, party. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Four page <laughs> letter. Yeah. AJ number, the number. Well, AJ number, <laughs> number. But it's still a hit. So Viv was in the kitchen cooking the other day. Okay. And she did what I believe. Everybody in America does. What? She was listening to R. Kelly in the kitchen by herself <laughs> with nobody else around. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> shit. That's crazy because when you play R. Kelly in the club, <laughs> the club just stops. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody goes home <laughs> and, and listens listen to, to R. R. Kelly by themselves. And they don't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Like, it's like masturbation in America. <laughs> <laughs> you go home and do it by yourself and don't talk about it. Hell no, nah. <laughs> man. So I yeah. So as far as legacies go, like if you die too early and you only put out one or two projects, I don't think it's fair to the people that have put out a maximum amount of work. You know, and, yeah, because you got motherfuckers like. Like outcasts mm -hmm. who really who put really, out that really, shit. Yeah. And they consistently put that shit out, mm -hmm. you know? But then you got other people who fell off right. after the third or fourth project. Because mm -hmm. it's not easy to put out six, seven projects. Right. It's not easy to stay home. Yeah, yeah, you know? So maybe, maybe Biggie would have been the greatest rapper ever, period. 
no question about it, uh-huh. had he put out 12 projects. Yeah. On some Jay-Z shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jay-Z even kind of went down like after if you the think Black of, album. If, if Jay-Z would have died after volume one. Yeah. Like, we wouldn't even be talking about Jay-Z. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, there's some people who didn't get on into that fourth or fifth album. Now, see, that's funny. Like, what about, but we got artists who put out, like, they first couple joints were phenomenal. No. Like a Nas or a DMX. I was DMX. to say Nas. Yeah. So DMX went platinum twice in one year. Mm-hmm. That was his second and third album. That's unheard of. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, DMX is a, a great dope. How come he's never mentioned up there in the top five? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's the same reason why Tupac ain't. Because he wasn't that lyrical, spiritual, miracle-ass rapper. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They I try mean, to put... But his shit was real, though. DMX was always real. Like, yeah. when DMX yeah. spit a verse, it was like, oh, yeah, I know a guy like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can see DMX calling himself cruddy. <laughs> yeah. He said he was a cruddy nigga, man. Yeah, I ain't want to believe him. <laughs> Yeah, but all right, let's close that. Rest in rest in peace to Aaliyah, first of all. Yeah. And Your, all the other right, deceased people we mentioned. Right, and all the other deceased artists that we mentioned. Your legacies will not be forgotten. And we will not try to uh under downplay what you did for the culture. Yeah. But it is a fact that when people die, the hype surrounding who they were and the music they made gets increased. So that's just that's just the fact of life, man. So, uh, what else we got? We ain't got too much else, man. Yeah, man. We talking about death and you know the whole thousand notes slaughter shooting. All right, um, we gotta that's... talk about thousand notes. We gotta talk about it. So, we have a young boy with a, a tablet. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, playing Sonic. Yeah. The boy is four years old, and he plays Sonic better than some of y'all grown-ups. Yeah, Sonic's legacy is underrated. <laughs> yeah, but all right, on a sad note, we must talk about the shooting in Thousand Oak. Yeah, man. So. It's bad. You know, we got the, I don't know if y'all can see it, but there's a U.S. Marine Corps status mm-hmm. sticker on the inbox. Yeah. You know? Yesterday was the Marine Corps birthday. Thank you all for your service. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, yeah, man, it's... It's crazy how this dude is, he sent, he put it on Facebook first Uh and then he went and did it and then he tweeted about it and then he killed himself. Uh Uh-huh. You know, like what I don't understand is, um, just how the people that knew him are coming out now and saying, yeah, he had a problem. Now why the fuck didn't you do something about it? That's that's a that's major, man. Because you 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 bet. See, it's it's hard for like let's say it's me and you, for example, right? Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to to do that to you, knowing that maybe you go and shoot something up, maybe you don't. But if I say something, I could potentially destroy your life forever. Or you could be the first one to get shot. Pretty much. See, but all right. So how come that shit don't happen around here? I, you know what? I don't know. Like, it's a bunch of crazy motherfuckers with guns just all around here. I mean, you know? I guess because you can be crazy. Like, like, you can be out here and be crazy. You don't have to hide it. Is that what it is? He had to hide it. Maybe. Like, it, it's not okay to be crazy in Thousand Oaks. I guess. But it's I- okay to be crazy in. West Humble Park. But I mean, if you look at it, that's what we see all the time. It's not the, it's the person that has to pretend. It's the guy that's in the office building for 40 years. You yeah. know, that finally snaps and shoots all his co-workers. You know, and you living in the ghetto, it's just a bunch of people out here living their truth. Yeah. All right. I, I can see that. Yeah. Because I mean, if it's a crazy motherfucker that's a little too crazy. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker, somebody's gonna call the police. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, whether it's the old lady in the window or it's the old man down the street living off his retirement. Yeah. Somebody's gonna be like, hey, get this crazy motherfucker off the street. And they're gonna come and get him off the street. You know, and the, and the, and the street's and, still gonna be crazy, but it's gonna be a little safer. And the, the, the strangest part to me, well, the part that's most disturbing 
is the fact that he tweeted during the massacre that he didn't have any reason to do it. Like he just did it for no reason. Never die alone. DMX. I, I, that was a good movie. Yeah, it was a damn good movie. Yeah. I love Never Die Alone. That should have won an Oscar. But this is... So he killed 12 people with a handgun, by the way. He killed himself. He's number 12. Right. So he was the 12th person. Yeah. So this makes me think, right? I was thinking about the environment in which these shootings take place. So it always end up being like a fish in the barrel type situation. Yeah. Like you get a group of people that can't defend themselves. That probably don't know how to def- I mean, who can defend themselves against the ex Marine? I mean, a bar inebriated already. Well, I mean, that's that's one thing. That's one thing. But I I just think about all the places that are in this country where you go and you see a big sign that says no firearms. Yeah. So that's basically saying everybody in here is unarmed. Yeah. So if you want to come in here and shoot, there'll be nobody able to stop you. Yeah. Like that's the the whole no the gun free zones. It's kind of crazy to me. Cause it's like, who are you saying yeah, that to? That sticker is stupid. Are you saying it to the people that are lawfully carrying firearms? Yeah, you are. That's right. who you're saying it to. Right. So the the guy that don't give a fuck about laws, that's <laughs> yeah. like, come on in, man. You ready to shoot? You come yeah. right here and get all the target practice you want, cause the people that obey laws didn't bring their gun today. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? It's like they talking about, well, we need st- uh, stricter gun laws. Like against who? Against the people who are legally buying guns and have to be PC. Yeah, like that's that. who the gun laws need to be changed for. Because the motherfuckers around here that got guns did not buy them legally. And don't give a fuck what law you put on the books. You know what I'm saying? Because they only going to shoot the person that they need to shoot. Mm-hmm. Like the people who go out and buy these guns legally and train themselves on how to use them are training themselves for a reason. Mm-hmm. To go and use them. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Training yourself for if you need to use it, that you can shoot the person that you need to shoot and mm-hmm. not anybody else. Yeah. You know, and then when they go crazy, they're like, well, maybe I need to shoot everybody because mm-hmm. I don't want to die alone. Right. And there needs to be some kind of deterrent for when these things happen. It's like, it's I mean, like, what's the, how are you going to stop? What, how are you going to deter when somebody's ready to die? So look, like, this is, I'm ready to kill myself. So I'm going to kill 11 people and then kill myself. So this is what I was thinking. Like, about. You can't stop me from killing myself. No, this is what I was thinking about though. Even though it's nothing guaranteed, you're not guaranteed to stop anything, but you can put yourself in a better position than not having any deterrent at all. See, so now I like the Onion article. Every Mm -hmm. time this happens, a guy we went to high school with posts the same Onion article on Instagram Mm -hmm. and says, there's no way to stop this, says the only country where this happens on a regular basis. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and we had we had this. This was a conversation we had many episodes ago. There has been many episodes. Yeah, and it's like, shit. The gun is not the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's like, not the yeah, gun. Yeah, the gun is not the problem. It's a people problem. It's yeah. a human problem. It's an American problem. It's a capitalism problem. Yeah, like mm-hmm. laws will not stop this problem. Like everything else stems from capitalism, mm-hmm. and the fact that I believe that we're not all the same race. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you go to Mexico, what's in Mexico? Mexicans. Mexicans. You go to Italy, what's in Italy? Italians. Italians. You go to Africa, what's in Africa? Africans. Africans. You come to America, it's a melting pot. Everybody hates each other. Yeah, but... Instead of everybody loving each other. That's what I can honestly say. You know? In in America, Everybody has a, a certain level of disdain for the other races. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. we, you, and especially in places like Chicago. And mm-hmm. then you can look at California, too. Where it's really segregated. At, mm-hmm. You, know you got saying? all of these pockets of people. Yeah. And it's like, we know why we're separated from each other. Yeah. We because know, when we get together, it's yeah. fucked up. We know why you go to Cermak Produce. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. you go to certain that produce when it's taco night. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that's that's yeah. their own purpose. We know why they dyed the river green on St. Patrick's Day. Exactly because 
Yeah. We're a Green River City. So you you think mm-hmm. the link to the violence is uh racial racial No, all of this every all the racism, all the classism, uh, everything is due to capitalism. Yes. So can we wrap up all the negativity into one thing? Like is it all just hate? Like if we take all of the subcategories out, what is it? It's that gold ring up there. And I need to step on anybody's back in order to get to that gold ring. Mm -hmm. Capitalism. So capitalism is the problem. So if capitalism is the problem. I don't care about your feelings. I don't care about your stomach. I don't care how you wiping your ass. Mm -hmm. I need that gold ring. Mm -hmm. I want that Lambo. I want that mansion. I want that airplane. I want that, you know what I'm saying? So let me ask you, what do you think is the solution if capitalism is the problem? You think yeah. socialism is the answer? Yeah, see, that's that's the question. See, that's and that's where the that's the hard question. That's where the real debate takes place. As a born and bred American, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying my grandmother came here from another country. Oh, right? your grandmother was a supreme capitalist too. <laughs> you know, and then my mother was born here. My father was born here. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've I've only known a capitalist lifestyle. Like, right. I don't know any other lifestyle. To be like, oh yeah, well, I tried this for six months and that was great. Mm-hmm. You know, I went over here and we did crop sharing and then I had the peppers and they had the carrots and we ate and everything was all love and dove and, yeah. you know, I, I don't know anything else besides capitalism. I wonder though, I wonder. So I it, really, I, I guess that's my answer to your question. I don't know anything else. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think, so as long as capitalism has existed, this problem has existed. So when it wasn't guns, it was baseball bats. When it wasn't baseball bats, it was knives. Rope. And when it wasn't knives, it was ropes. Like, it's always been this way. It's been a people thing. Yeah. Like, and, my group is better than your group. And I think that's the conversation that we, that the, the, the people that are on the level to create the legislation need to really sit down and have. Like, when they say common sense as referring to like gun laws and stuff, how about not common sense gun laws, but common sense. Period. Period. Yeah. Like yeah. Man, if 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 your goal is to stop things like this from happening, because let's get to the real problem. So you know what I don't understand uh-huh. is when people tell me that they don't understand what I'm saying. Right. Like people, a lot of people say I talk in riddles, mm-hmm. but when I talk to my people, when I talk to you, or Arlo, or Jeremy. Y'all understand what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how we talk to each other. But to the average person, I'm like, what? What are you trying to say? I don't understand what you're saying. You know, I think I think that's one of the benefits of capitalism, though. Because you don't have to understand. All you gotta do is put the weed in the bag. But we use a lot of common sense Mm -hmm. in our everyday conversation. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's I don't have to explain myself explicitly to you Mm -hmm. to get my point across to you. Right. You don't have to give me every detail of exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, because you already know about like something about it. And what you don't know, you use context clues Mm -hmm. to fill in the blanks and you use the subject matter and you you use common sense. I figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. But most people don't have that figure it out. You know, that's funny. Because I'm thinking now, is things like people hurting people and, and and mass violence, is that, if that's a, a side effect of capitalism, is it worth it? Is capitalism worth it, if that's a side effect? hmm I mean, no. I, I, can, I can say no, because capitalism is like the medicine. Mm-hmm that they give you to treat something that you can treat naturally. Mm-hmm. Like you can naturally not starve. Yeah. You can put the seed in the dirt and water it mm-hmm. and not starve. Mm-hmm. You know, you can hit the hit the chicken with the baseball bat and eat the chicken. So it's in the interest starve. of capitalism not to teach you how to fish. Yeah. But to open this fish, fish market. place with yeah. fish sandwiches two for a dollar. Yeah. Hmm. You know, because there's there's the medicine that they're going to give you that's mm-hmm. going to have all these side effects. And there's the natural 
um, holistic healing that mm -hmm. you can do on your own and get really rid of the problem. You can really get rid of the hunger and the hatred. Like, why would I hate anybody if I have everything I need? So can all you the do time? that? Can you do that and still have the Lamborghini you want? I think if you do that, you lose the desire for the, for Lamborghini. the Lamborghini. Yeah. Like you don't want the Lamborghini anymore because mm -hmm. you have everything you need. Mm -hmm. you know? And that it goes from having everything you want to having everything you need. I mean, it's still, we, we've lived in times where it was like that and it was still a desire for something more. I mean, and that's where you see like tribalism really come into play. Like I want to be the chief because I have everything I need, but I have to have something to want. But see, the reason why you want to be the chief when you have everything you need is because people that don't have everything they need flock to you. Mm -hmm. So you have the tribe. Mm -hmm. So you are the chief. Literally. And you have everything you need. People that don't have everything they need are going to come try to get it from you. I mean, yeah. and either they're going to take it from you, which makes you not the chief, mm -hmm. or they're going to ask you for it and you're going to teach them how to get it, so, which makes you the chief. So violence is going to happen. No matter what kind of society we live in, it's just the reasons for the violence is going to be different. See, now, what is violence? Is a crocodile killing the wildebeest at the watering hole violence? Or mm -hmm. is that necessary for the crocodile to eat? I mean, just because it's necessary don't make it no less violent. I mean, the crocodile only eats meat. Mm -hmm. So for it to eat meat, it has to kill. Yeah. If it eats rotten meat, it's going to die because it's going to have, it's going to be poisoned. Right. You know, so it needs fresh meat to survive. So is the crocodile's existence violent? Yes. I guess that's why it's a predator. Pretty much. All right. I mean, look at it this way, right? You have, uh, like, when conquest, in the days of conquest, when that was the order of the day, mm -hmm. when all of this shit, the way the globe is mapped out now, was being made, mm -hmm. you, would have, you would have uh, armies invade countries... Rape all the women, uh, kill all the men, and enslave all the children. Not because they were that bad of people, but this is how you take over and take control. Yeah. There is no other way to take this from them yeah. than to do this to them. Because mm -hmm. if we have generations of people that grow up wanting to fight us, one day somebody is going to get enough people to kick us out of this motherfucker. Yeah. So we have to destroy everything you love. And that's mm -hmm. very violent, but it's very necessary. See, is the act of conquering somebody else is violent in it is, itself. It is penetrative. You know, like you don't need, like if you have everything you need, there's no reason to go conquer somebody else. I think the nature of man is conquest. Eh, I don't know, man. I feel like, I feel like motherfuckers was just chilling. Like, I, I don't think there was ever a time like that. You don't think so? Never. I think it's always been okay. We I got mean, look at Cain and Abel. Look at the Garden of Eden. Like, even though these are biblical tales, it it speaks to the nature of mankind. How? Yeah, how you always want more. Yeah, you, you got, always want more because you have a brain, and that brain is gonna work, and that brain has to have something else to work on. Yeah, it always has to be a scheme or a plot or something for me to figure out. I guess that's that's why capitalism works so well. Mm -hmm. It's because there's always more to want. It's always you're always on the take, even though you don't need it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you're gonna want it. See, and that's why I asked you the question because it's like, all right, you don't if you if you take capitalism out and replace it with something else, you still gonna have this desire for conquest. It's just gonna be not a free market for you to do so. Yeah. So like. In capitalism, it's the chips fall where they may. You 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 roll your dice and you hit your point at your own discretion. Mm -hmm. Either you crap out or you don't. And as a side effect, somebody's gonna get mad and frustrated mm -hmm. and shoot up the dice game. Yeah. But do we stop having dice games? Yeah. See, that's the thing. Like, without dice games, there's nothing to do. It, without dice games, you're just sitting there selling dope. Selling dope. Literally. Literally. Right. Like, I've seen it. It's either you selling dope or oh I got four dollars. Oh, oh you shooting dollars. dice to get the person that's selling dope's money 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's a never-ending cycle. This is how it has to happen. It's either you're doing something or you're doing yeah. nothing. So, while I'm not a fan of of the the things that capitalism breeds, I think that as far as people having things and getting things, I think capitalism is the best example of how it can be done. See, I... I'm on I'm on this whole drug thing right now. Like capitalism is a drug. It's a it's an unnecessary yeah. drug, you know. I don't with, think it's unnecessary with side effects, but euphoric feelings. Mm -hmm. Like euphoric um what's it called? Effects. Uh -huh. Effects. Like the effect of capitalism is uh -huh. I can have whatever I want. Uh -huh. You know, you get that pair of J's. Who you, is affected by the effects? The user. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's beyond that, though, because you look at drug users. Mm -hmm. You're just as bad off as me if I'm your son and I'm drug addicted and you're giving me money for drugs. Mm -hmm. Or you telling me no when I ask you for money for drugs. You're going to need rehabilitation just as bad as I'm going to need it. Well, I mean, that's why McDonald's gets sued every day. It's true. And Walmart, and, you know. It's like, true. These are the capitalist giants. Mm -hmm. And we're the, you know... They're they're giving us capitalism, mm -hmm. you know. And we're out here working our little jobs, you know, for it. Yeah. And then, yeah, you got the side effects of man, I can't go to Walmart and get my wild crap. See, and now so I'm, I'm feeling fuck this whole I'm, Walmart up. I'm feeling what you said now because you said I can't say what else to do because capitalism is all I know. It's like I'm racking my brain right now and nothing comes. It's yeah, like, right? man, like, I've read about you put the weed in the bag and, and then get money. And that mm. money is my money. This is my business. Yeah. Like, this is my business. This is what I do. I'm growing this to make money for me. Like, what else do you know? What else would I want? What like, that's you? deep. Like, what else would I want besides me going and getting mine for me? Yeah. You know, that's deep. Like, I guess, yeah. Like the only other thing would be you going to get one tenth of the one hundred percent with the other nine people. And I don't know if I want that. Yeah, because what? What if you giving one hundred and ten percent? They only giving eighty five percent. Exactly. So it's basically stealing. Like you're gonna steal from me because I I worked harder to get this, but still I have to give it up. Because we're working together yeah. as a community. Like, man, I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that equal guaranteed outcome. Yeah. Like, if it's not equal guaranteed work, it shouldn't be equal guaranteed outcome. Yeah. And that's why I like capitalism, I think. Yeah. yeah. And also because it's the only thing you ever lived in. True, true. Yeah. It's the only thing I've ever known. Yeah. But, yeah. So, I would say, in conclusion... Rest in peace to all the victims of the Thousand Oaks shooting. And mm -hmm. let's keep the families in our prayers. And let's have more conversations like this with more people. Yeah. Have this conversation with somebody that you haven't had this kind of talk with. And this is our table. But my stance is still strong. Mm -hmm. Fuck PC. Oh, yeah. Fuck it, Otto. Fuck it in the ear. Fuck That's that's, being politically correct. That's how we end the fucking problem that we end up. That's now. how we end up with shit like this. Yeah. With not being able to walk up to him like, nigga, you got a fucking problem. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yeah. Fuck that shit. Yep. Yeah. You know? Fuck it in the air. That's how I feel about it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, rest in peace to all the victims. Let's keep our, the families in our prayers, man, and, and let's just work on becoming better people together. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not politically correct people. Better yeah, people. Better people. Actually better people. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah. So there's one thing I wanted to talk about. Okay. I was thinking about the double-sided coin that is Kanye's statement on slavery as a choice. Uh-huh. Right? Because on one side, you got the, I work 40 hours a week and I don't commit any crimes. So by you committing a crime and deciding to go to jail, you are a slave. Mm -hmm. Right? And then on the other side, you got the drug dealer, the bank heist person, who's like, I'm going to live free because I'm going to go take what I want and I ain't going to be no slave working 40 hours a week. 
Mm-hmm. So what is the slavery? Is the slavery the 40 hour work week or is the slavery going to jail? I think, Ooh, that's, that's, I think that, I think the slavery is the, we are a slave to our nature. So I think the slavery is the mentality, the mentality to have to do instead of having to be. I don't know if I, that's clear. No. Nah. Okay. So, right. so the slavery is having to get up, having the need to get up and go and work a job. The slavery is getting up and having to go outside and take something from somebody else. Right. So it's not why you doing it. It's what you doing. So are we slaves to capitalism period? Like either you're going to work for the money or you're going to take the money. But at the end of the day, you got the money. I think your heart is a slave to your mind. I think the, the human brain is the slave wow. master. You know what? You know, it's crazy. What? Your heart sends 10 times more messages to your brain than your brain sends to your heart. Mm-hmm. Like you, you sense shit with your heart mm-hmm. and your gut. Like they send messages to your brain more than your brain sends messages to your heart and your yeah. gut. Yeah. Damn. That's deep. That is deep. It's hella deep. Because there's all sorts of tricking going on up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, look, look, they doing this, they doing that. Mm-hmm. Your brain's like, yeah, I know. Like, man. But all the time your brain didn't know. Shut up and keep beating. Yeah. Shut up and keep digesting. Yeah. Nobody care about your hunch, nigga. Wow. Put the weed in the bag. Wow. That is deep. It's the brain, man. Yeah, man. Because you, you steady talking about the brain. Mm-hmm. How the brain's going to have everything it needs, but it's still going to want. Mm-hmm. And it's still gonna work because the brain is a machine, and the brain is does will never turn off. Wow, yeah, and that was just my question of the week. I've been mm-hmm. racking my brain about this. Mm-hmm. Like, is it is the forty hour work week the slave, or is going to jail the slave? You know, but these are heavily existential conversations with tons of nuance, and, and, and it's it's this is the infinite conversation. Yeah, this is why we started doing the podcast. This in the is first right, place. right. This is uh, this is the Socratic method. I don't know what the I don't know that word. The art of debate. Ah, this is how this is how mankind figures things out mm. through asking these questions that have deep answers that you won't get answers to for generations. Yeah, it's not a yes or no answer. Right. It's not, oh yeah, well, the 40 hour work week. And that's why it's not it's it's important not to be PC because when you are being politically correct, you cannot express yourself You properly. can't ask these questions. Right. When you're you being can't politically answer correct. them. All right, you know, cuz being politically correct, you're going to say, "Oh, well, going to jail is mm. being a slave. You got to work your 40 hours." Yeah, like you work your 40 hours and then you eat the Eat the cranberry sauce out of the can on things like, like you have to be able to say <laughs> like man babies are gonna die because some babies die you have to say if you have an unprotected anal sex you might catch aids you got to be able to say these things yeah you know mm-hmm. but yeah so i mean that's mm-hmm. that's pretty sad but i think we made a lot of progress here today and if 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 people have watched this long i think it's good for us to be able to say this on camera. Yeah, man. Yeah. Fuck PC. Fuck PC. Let's love each other and let's grow together. Yeah, man. Grow together and just help people, man. Like, yeah. you see this motherfucker done change the laws to make it harder for immigrants to get, um, what's it called? Status? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, Migration, oh, not sorry. refugee status. No, nah, but yeah. But like, if I'm that. born here, no, 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 no. It's like refugee status. Well, asylum, get, asylum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, like these people are walking, uh-huh. you know, and the, oh, fact, right, the closer right, right. they get, they're coming here to claim the United States as an asylum. Yeah, and yeah. the closer they get, the harder it's getting for them to be able to get uh-huh. in. First, you send troops down there, and they're locked and loaded. You know what? You know what? And now he's changing laws. Let me tell you what I thought about. Mm-hmm. So, how many people are in this crowd of people walking? Like seven. Now, now it's like 10,000. It's 10,000 people. Mm-hmm. They've been walking for how long? Over a thousand miles. Nobody has stopped and thought. Like, man, let's go help them where they at. <laughs> 
Do you, you think about that? Like, yeah, like Mexico is just like standing there like. Right, like nobody's like, man, stop. let's go help them now while they're walking and hungry and cold and sleeping and what, outside. And what makes America the big shit? Like, how, are they, how do we know they're not walking to Canada? Man, how do you know they're not just going to keep going through Arizona, through Montana, and just go up to Canada? I don't know. Like, what made America think that they're going to stop here? Well, I definitely think as some people in this world, the philanthropic spirit should have came through to help these people where they at instead of just having them walk in and oh, be no, the news story. Mexico don't want them. Mm-hmm. That's why Mexico is letting them walk through. Yeah. Because they don't want them in Mexico. They're just standing there like, yeah. But I mean, me don't as me people as a that. me as a billionaire, multi-billionaire, watching these 10,000 people, see, it's the mentality that I made these billions. These my billions. Mm-hmm. But something in me would provoke me to want to do something for them while they are in transition. Like, but if you go to where they're at now, uh-huh. the Mexican government is going to be like, no. Mm. Don't help them here. We don't want them here. Buy them like a because uh, these aren't Mexicans. These are Hondurans and Guatemalans and some Mexicans. Buy them like a fleet of coach buses or something. I don't know. I mean, shit. I they, mean, just right? something like buy them some food or like something. Something like I right, yeah, like food or like some new sweaters or and create a, and socks a and create shoes. a giant mass of land that they can farm on or something. You something. can't do that. You can't create land. I mean, not create land, but purchase some land. And, and give it to them. Like, man, look. But I mean. But then you cause all kinds of problems because you got to govern it and do all Yeah, that creating thing. land is just like going to Honduras and giving them billions of dollars. Yeah. Like, here, Honduras, take these billions of dollars. Well, I, I'm just saying. That's well, what that, you. I mean, that's the only thing that they could do. Yeah. Like, these are Honduran people who are leaving Honduras because Honduras is fucked up. Yeah. So they're coming up here to be here because it's not as fucked up as Honduras. Only way to change that is to make Honduras not as fucked up as Honduras is now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And send them back. But then they got to walk back to Honduras. Whatever way it goes, they fucked. Yeah. So. All right. You want to close with that, man? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Hey, come here. Watch the courts. Be very careful. My brother's out here with something to live for, man. There we go. Say hi to the people. Say hi. hi. Right there. Say hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. This is what? Take a chill. So this is the student. Yeah. And it is time to get back to him. Yeah, time to get back to these students. All right. And the wild, wild, wild cracks. <laughs> Double salute. <laughs>